We all want to get along with our colleagues at work. But when you're a woman working among men, it's harder because men, they know how to work with other men. But a lot of them, at least initially, are uncomfortable working with a woman. So when we have a bad relationship, we don't always know if it's because of our job performance or it's because someone has an issue with us as a woman. Now, over the course of my career, I've worked with thousands of men, and I'm happy to report that I've had really great relationships with the vast majority of them. However, there are some notable exceptions, and you may not be surprised to find out that most of them were managers. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the story of a manager I had the worst relationship with. This man actually hated me, and I didn't know why. So I'm gonna tell you how I dealt with the situation and eventually turned it around. Just for a little background, I was working on a project when someone from another team asked me to look at their report because they thought there were some problems. And sure enough, there were. So I informed that project's management team. A few weeks later, she came back to me because the problems were getting worse. So I went back to their management team, and this time I told them I could free up some time and help out their team, but I was told I wasn't needed. Over the next several months, we repeated this cycle many times, and each time I was told I wasn't needed. Then one day, one of the managers told me I was reassigned to the project. So I contacted my boss to find out what he knew, and he told me he was just told he was also reassigned. As soon as we dug into the project, we discovered things were far worse than we suspected. And when I sent in my first report, the projections changed dramatically. A few days later, my boss came to me and told me that our manager read the report and accused me of manufacturing the numbers just to make the project look bad. And he demanded that I get fired for it. My boss told him I didn't manufacture anything because he had been working alongside me the entire time and he knew that every one of those numbers was accurate. So no, I wasn't getting fired. Now personally, I was pretty shocked. Why was this manager taking all of this so personally? No one said it was his fault. This manager was actually pretty new to the organization and we all knew that these problems existed years before he ever came along. So why was he so upset? Why didn't he understand that we're actually just trying to save his butt? Now, over the next several weeks, I just kept uncovering more and more problems. And you can imagine how stressful that was. And my anxiety just kept building because I knew that this made the manager want to fire me even more. So I woke up every Friday morning dreading it, thinking, is this the day I'm going to get fired? Then after several months, my boss came to me and he looked like he'd been dragged through the ringer. And all he said was, shut down your computer, we're gonna go get a drink. And I knew this wasn't going to be good. He told me that the manager demanded that I get fired. So my boss, who had a lot of clout in the company, went over his head. And there was a big to-do with my boss arguing that there was no one in the company who had the expertise to replace me. So for now, my job was saved. I asked my boss, why does this man hate me? What did I ever do to him? Because you know what the crazy thing about this is? I've never even met the man. So why does he want to fire me? And what about all the people that screwed up the project and all of the managers who ignored all the problems for years? Why aren't any of them getting fired? Why me? My boss said that the manager was asked what I had done to merit firing, and he wouldn't give a specific reason. He just wanted me fired. I looked at my boss and said, well, I do realize that I am the only woman. At this point, I could have said a heck of a lot more, like what I was really thinking. Fire me, and I become a very wealthy woman. But I knew I couldn't say that. Even though I wasn't fired, my job was hanging on by a thread because this manager had made me a lawsuit waiting to happen and everybody knew it. So I was now perceived as a bigger threat to the company than this project that was going south. So I had to walk on eggshells. I had to be really careful about everything I said, everything I did, and every email I sent. I even stopped hanging out with any of my colleagues because I knew that if I said or did something that they could take and twist into grounds for dismissal, they'd use it. 
So the reason I didn't say anything else to my boss was because I knew he was going to be questioned about whether or not I was talking about suing them. And I wanted him to be able to say, I haven't heard say anything like that. Soon after that, the manager decided that he needed to take charge of the project. He gathered the team together and said he wanted to meet with the key personnel and he began listing off names. When he was done, everyone was staring at me because he didn't call my name. The manager then looked at me and said he had three jobs for me to do. First, go to Staples and buy notebooks for the key personnel. Second, go to the airport and pick up the top dog who was flying in that afternoon. And third, are you ready for this classic? Make dinner reservations for tonight for the key personnel to meet the top dog. You could hear the jaws drop and hit the ground and everyone looked around wondering who would be the first to say it. I didn't feel the need to say anything because there it was for all to see. This is another point where we have to resist the urge to react. But today, we're being conditioned to think that as soon as we're offended, we must immediately express our outrage to show that we know how to stand up for ourselves. But that's actually a pretty stupid thing to do. It's like playing poker and showing everyone your cards. So this is why we need to keep our mouths shut until we have all of our ducks lined up in a row and we have a plan to deal with the situation. So after a well-deserved coffee break, I'm off to Staples to buy the notebooks. Then as I'm standing in the aisle, it comes to me. I know what I'm going to do. Oh my God, are guys really this stupid? Are they really going to let me do this? Back in the office, everyone was tiptoeing around me, wondering what I was going to do. My boss found me and said, I'll take care of the dinner reservations. And I knew what he was planning. I then told him, I'm going to the airport. And he knew I had a plan too. I'd never really met the top dog before, but I'd heard a lot about him. And I knew he was one of those men you never want to make mad. Most people were intimidated by him, but since I was in the Air Force, I was used to being grilled by senior officers, and I knew how to deal with men like this. So after some small talk, he dove right in, asking me questions about the project, and I gave him direct answers without any sidestepping or sugarcoating. By the time we finished the long drive back to the office, I'd answered all of his questions and told him everything he wanted to know. Oh, and did I mention that this was the man my boss went to to save my job? So he knew that I knew everything. Now many of you probably thought that I was going to spend my time talking about how I was being sexually discriminated. But again, this is where we have to stop reacting and start thinking. Discussing all of that would have only confirmed that my mind was on a lawsuit and that I was a threat to the company. I needed to turn the tables. This long drive from the airport gave me the opportunity to prove to Mr. Top Dog that I was as critical to the project as he had heard. By answering all of his questions directly, I confirmed that without me working all of the issues, this project was going to implode. And Mr. Top Dog, that would not be in your best interest. I wanted him to realize on his own that there was a new threat to the company, and it was me getting fed up with all the garbage I was dealing with and just walking out the door. My real goal for this drive was to make Mr. Top Dog realize that it was in his best interest, not only to keep me on the project, but to also make sure that I was a very happy camper. Later that night when I arrived at the restaurant, my manager gave me the look that said, what are you doing here? And my boss who ensured that I was included in the dinner count proudly escorted me to the table. The next afternoon, I drove the top dog back to the airport, and on the long drive, he again asked me pointed questions. I could tell he'd been given some sugar-coated answers, and he wanted me to remove the sugar-coating. After he got out of the car, I was confident my plan had worked. A couple of days later, my boss informed me that word came down from the top that I was to stay on the project. And with that kind of support behind me, my relationship with my manager became professionally cordial. 
Of course, we never know how these situations will end, so we document everything along the way, hoping we'll never need to use it. But if you need to file a complaint, watch my video, Know the Complaint Process, to learn some of the simple rules you need to follow in order to increase your chances of a successful outcome. This is Dot Callahan asking you to help me turn the woman in the room into the women in the room. Sign up for my newsletter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or find the woman in the room on Facebook. It's up to you. Just keep watching and sharing my videos to get advice from a woman who's been there, dealt with that, and knows what works.